Good morning, guys. Hope you are having a great day so far. We are again taking a look at the Mythic C2 framework with the Apollo C Sharp agent. And I promise you there's something new here because I have actually made a tiny bit of a contribution. So if you don't know anything about the Mythic C2 framework, I suggest go check out my previous videos. There's a ton of other videos about the Mythic C2 framework as well as there, but super short. Mythic C2 is an open source C2 framework that you can find on GitHub. It is mainly maintained by this awesome individual called It's a Feature on Twitter, on X, on everything, and obviously by the Spectrops folks, right? And it is, in my opinion, a really good approach to what a modern C2 might look like, hence why I like it so much. And it has the open source C2 agent called Apollo, which is their C Sharp Net framework based agent. It is really powerful, it's really great, but it has one major drawback, and that is that it only supports HTTPS and BNTCP when it comes to profiles or just the main, how the agent communicates back to the C2. And these two are fine for lateral movement, for on-prem stuff, fine. However, this, the HTTP profile, is a really basic implementation of C2 traffic over the wire over HTTP or HTTPS. It essentially just does get or post a big fat encrypted blob, that's it. It's going to stick out if you're up against any sort of defenders that have good telemetry and good insight onto the network traffic within their environment. Oh, threat found, great. So what do we do? Mythic already has this community created HTTPX profile, which is more or less a port or something heavily inspired at least from Cobalt Strike's malware profile when it comes to the network section. This doesn't affect anything in OPSEC or evasion on the machine. It just affects how the network traffic is going to look. And so I took my, I took upon myself the burden, obviously largely with the help of cursors and some vibe coding and some late nights to implement the HTTPX profile into the Apollo agent. And you can find that on GitHub right now on my Apollo fork. I am hoping that we can test this together, you and I, and actually get this merged into the Apollo agent. But I want to give this a proper testing before I go ahead and break everybody's favorite in that framework agent. We're going to set this up. We're going to set up Mythic. I have a baseline server running. Set up Mythic, set up HTTPX, set up Apollo, and then we are going to be using our channel sponsors toolkit, MacroPack Pro from Balliskit, again, which is a channel sponsor, to get around just your vanilla Defender solution on the machine, deploy it, and then give it a go. So, first of all, we are going to have to connect to my Mythic server, which is currently running in the cloud. Obviously, this IP is going to be long gone by the time you see this video, so don't bother probing it. It's probably somebody else's property at that point, right? So, let's just accept that key, type in the password, and there we go. Let's get clone the Mythic C2 framework. I've done, I think I've done a video on the Mythic setup before. However, the documentation is really good. So just check out their docs, Mythic C2.net, and then under installation, you have everything you need right there. We're going to move into the Mythic folder that the Git clone created, and we are going to run the bash install docker Ubuntu bash script because we are running uh, currently Ubuntu on this Linux server. And that's your bit. Now, this is going to take a while. I'm going to skip ahead in the video to when this is deployed. Now, after this dependency step is done, you just need to type make, and it will actually do the installation of the Mythic CLI. And Mythic CLI is just a local utility we use to manage and control all the Docker instances running within Mythic. Once that is done, we can now install the Apollo agent. We can just do using the Mythic CLI install and then reference a GitHub and then my Apollo fork. This would probably be the main Apollo instance if the fork goes in, depending on when you're watching this video, take that into account. And then after that is done, we need to set up the HTTPX profile as well. You just got to give Apollo a minute. There's quite a bit of dependencies that is going to be deployed within this Docker image. Now, while this is running, I'm actually going to set up the port, which Mythic will be running on once it gets up. So I'm going to SSH back into the machine. But first, I need to generate myself private key and public key pair. There we go. I got my pub key. Now I can just print that out. There we go. And I'll SSH onto the machine again. And I'll add that to the authorized keys file on the VM. Just get that password again. Then I'll do... I'll add that, go, and then the next time I SSH in, I should now not be prompted by a password. Great. I'll add the L parameter to the SSH connection to indicate that I want a uh, locally port forward a port so I can access the local or the Mythic instance bind the two local hosts on this Linux machine, which I believe should be 7734 or something. Yeah, it's 7443. There we go. My bad. So 7443. And then I have that forwarded. And then we need to install the HTTPX profile as well, which is going to be using that same Mythic CLI installed on the GitHub sub module, pointing it at the HTTPX profile on GitHub. So the nice thing is that I don't really need to make any changes to the HTTPX profile implementation itself. 
I just need to make sure that my HTTPX profile implementation in Apollo matches that spec. So there we go. And now we're just going to do mythic CLI. Oh, if I could type that would be great. I believe just start. It's going to start all the things and make sure everything is running. And that's probably also going to take a while. So that is the only major drawback with mythic is that there, there's a lot of dependencies. There's a lot going on to give you that flexibility and to give you a modern C2. But yeah, so there's a complexity as well, but they have made a really good job at one documenting this, but also creating that really handy mythic CLI utility that we can use to start and stop and install and fix dependencies and debug and whatnot. So still great. However, if you are having issues with getting mythic CLI up and running or sorry, mythic Z2 framework up and running, my experience is that you're probably not giving the VM enough juice. Like you need, what is the minimum spec required here? I think they're talking about something like two CPUs and four gigs of RAM, I'm going to go ahead and say you just double that to make sure it actually gets up and running, especially when you start adding more profile and more agents, there's more Docker containers running. So yeah, you just give the VM enough use just to make sure everything works out. So now we have Mythic running at 7443. So if I go ahead and navigate to that, I should be prompted by an HTTPS error indicating I need to trust it. Obviously, I need to actually specify HTTPS. And it's going to be danger. I'm going to be no, we're good. It's fine. And we need to log in. Now, the login for this is going to be mythic underscore admin. And the admin password is actually stored in the end file, which we should be able to cat and just grab password. And then obviously that is case sensitive. So there it is. That's my mythic admin password. And I'm not sure it's going to ask me to change it. No, it isn't because it's already saved. So we're now into mythic, mythic and we go on the side here and we go to install services. We should see the Apollo agent, as well as the C2 profile. And that should be it. That should be everything we need to get up and running. Now, I already have an Azure function set up pointing to the C2 server as a redirector. If you want to check that out, or if you want to use something similar, you can check out my GitHub project called Azure C2 Relay. It is quite old, but you could probably still make this work. I am using a variation of this just to use an Azure function as a redirector. There's so many ways to abuse the cloud for redirectors. And in short, I just want to, I don't want to be bothered with domain categorization and HTTPS certificates. I just wanted to work out of the box. So I already have an Azure function functioning as a redirector set up to point at my mythic instance to port 80. So I just got to make sure that my C2 profile is actually running at port 80, which it probably isn't. So let's do this. No, wait, oh, I'm a noob. Let's do edit config, change that to port 80, because that is what I have exposed. And then click, oh no, that's 82. Oh, I typed 82 again, 80. We go and then submit that. And then it will reboot that container and make sure the settings are applied. On the Apollo side, we don't need to change anything. So if we now go back to my fork, there is this little folder called malleable profile examples, which should give you a good indication of what you can do. So I'm just going to pick any one of these. Let's do the CDN one. So it's going to set a bunch of URIs. It's going to send a bunch of headers. It's going to send, set some other things. I'm going to download this and then I'm going to make any obvious changes or at least look at this, just to make sure I am not breaking the installation here or the Apollo agent generated. So refer, that's fine. These headers are all good. So let's see if this works out of the box here or if I'm already broken. So these are vibe code generated just based on random stuff on the interwebs, but they have been tested and should work. At least they worked the last time around. So we'll see if they do now. Let's go to payloads and then actions, generate new polo, payload, and then select Windows, Apollo, start fresh. And actually there's a new option here called enable keying. And this is also something I added in my fork. And this allows us to make sure that the payload only runs on the machines that we want it to run on. This is basic OPSEC stuff that you should be doing if you are not. Just so you are aware, this sort of keying implemented in Apollo here is absolutely not meant to resist manual analysis. Somebody pulling apart this binary is going to be easily able to bypass this keying. That's just how it works. However, automated analysis, not so much. If you drop this onto a machine or a sandbox that isn't keyed or doesn't have the values that are, you're looking for in this keying method, it's not going to run. And that's probably in most cases going to stop somebody immediately looking at it afterwards in manual analysis. So just pointing that out that this isn't meant to be like the end all be all for making sure it doesn't get executed where it shouldn't. So host name wise, I have this payload testing machine here, which is running Defender. So I'm just going to open CMD if I could type. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I can type host name. And then I'm going to copy that out back into the stream machine here. And that should be, there we go. So now 
this Apollo agent will only run on the machine with that hostnet. Great. You can also toggle on the debug switch if you want to see all the output from the HTTPX profile coming out. Let's not do that. Let's just assume it's going to work and then click next. And then I'm just going to give myself all the things. Probably shouldn't do this. One thing that I definitely wouldn't want is Mimikatz loaded. So actually, let's just skip Mimikatz, but let's skip everything else. And now you should see that the HTTPX profile is an option for this agent and you include it. And you only really need to change two things here. So you need to change the callback domain and then you need to upload the config, which is at the bottom here. So the callback domain is going to be something I set up when I created the server. Again, that's going to be my Azure function in this case. Note that you can add more here now. That is also one of the benefits with the HTTPX profile is that you can have multiple domains to call back is in case somebody, some of them are blocked due to outbound network restrictions, but we're just going to use this one callback. Let's make it a three and the four, just so it calls back quick. And then you have the raw C2 config at the bottom here. And this is where you want to provide that C2 or that malleable profile that we got from the examples. I'm just going to use this one straight from the example. And then the kill date to make sure the payload dies after a certain date. When the engagement is done, let's just say Wednesday, the engagement is over and click next and create payload. And that should kick off the payload, replacing the source code bits and then compiling it and putting it into the correct format and whatnot. So we can just leave this and go to payloads and we'll see the current progress. Right now it should be compiling and then we'll have an exe. And there we go. The Apollo payload is compiled. Let's download it. Let's make sure Edge isn't so edgy about allowing us to keep it. Note that this machine does actually have the same host name as the machine that I'm going to be testing on in a second here. So I can just run this and confirm that it actually works. I do highly recommend doing this just to confirm that stuff actually works. As you can see, this is my sixth callback. Stuff definitely works on the first attempt, guys. Let's do who am I and a simple PWD and see if we can get any output. The agent processing sub thing is a really good indication that the agent actually processed the command. And there we go. We got all the output we need. Great. So this now works. I'm just going to do a simple exit callback to sure exiting works. And there we go. It's gone. And I'm going to hide it. Now over to our channel sponsor, Beliskit, who provides three amazing toolkits, both MacroPack Pro, Shellcopack Pro, and Darwin App Ops, which actually that last one actually helps you get around EDRs and other sort of restrictive software on the Mac platform. So that is super interesting. Maybe something we'll explore in a future video. But for this video, I'm going to be demonstrating MacroPack Pro which is there, I want to say of the three softwares, two of them being for Windows is largely aimed at initial access. So it has really couple, has really interesting output formats. Obviously, Shackle Pro also has them, but I feel like Mac Pro is the one that is for initial access. We are, however, going to be using it for its .NET obfuscator. So we're just going to pick our Apollo payload straight up here, and we're going to call it, please subscribe, subscribe. And we're just going to store it as a simple exe because why not output? And then I'm just going to leave it as it is. Again, one of the amazing things about all the Beliskit softwares is that they have something called bypass profiles. And it comes with all these profiles that have been tested among against many of the top EDRs out there. I'm not going to name them, but you can read them from the screen here. And we are going to be just going to be using the, the Defender bypass one, just the default one. We're working against just normal marks of Defender, not even Defender for endpoint here. So it almost doesn't matter, but whatever. And this is going to obfuscate and embed our .NET payload into another, inside another .NET loader. There we go. Let's, pro, uh, let's click generate. And then there's going to be a new file here called please subscribe. And give us a second to do, do, do this VM is slow. And there we go. Now, I'm just going to copy paste this over to our Microsoft Defender VM and see if we can get access on it. And no immediate detection. Let's do a quick scan with Microsoft Defender. It says no detections. Great. Let's run it. And we should get a call back any second here. And there we go. So that is it. And now you can use all the great stuff within the Apollo agent. And you can also use the Forge stuff, which I haven't talked about. Maybe I should, you know what? Let's take a look at Mythic C2 Forge. It is really neat. If you're an, if you're serious about your, wow, I cannot type for the love of God. I'm so sorry, Mythic <laughs> Forge. So this is a big collection, or how do I explain this? If you install this as a container, as a service on your Mythic Seater framework, you will have immediate access to both the Sliver Armory, which is essentially every useful buff out there, as well as Sharp Collection. Hey, I'm actually called out here, sick. 
to immediately deploy onto your agents. Let's do mythic CLI install GitHub, and then we'll do that forge GitHub URI. I hit the mic. I'm sorry there, guys. It's probably one of the smaller Docker containers. I'm going to guess it's going to come up pretty quickly. And that will actually give us immediate access to the forge collection command, which will allow us to just pick whatever thing we want to run on the machine. So let's do, where's my mythic C2? Let's do forge. You'll see forge collections here now. If you could just hit that, you can select between shop collection and sliver armory. Let's do sliver armory. Click task. And you can now just pick and choose what buffs you want to have straight into Mythic. No need to parse CNAs. No need to figure out what the different input argument types are and like convert them into. Oh, fuck all that. We're good now. So if I want to do unhook buff, great. Let me just do that. If I want to check if the domain controller has still up signing, let's do that. If I want to do some service enumeration, let's do that. If I want to do, obviously, net shares is probably great to have. Oh, the ADCS stuff is great, right? So I can just do all this and it will just register as commands straight into Mythic. And if I want to run these, all I can do is just... Oh, I have to remember. Let's do LLAP sign check, forge buff LLAP sign check or forge buff uh, ADCS enum, right? SA ADCS enum or forge buff. Let's do SA enum for services and then i'll just hit enter and it will now remunerate every service running on this machine so it will take that buff it will select the architecture it will compile or format the correct input arguments jam it into there send it down the line apollo will load its cough loader it will execute that buff in memory and will return the output back to me over chunks using our HTTPX mobile profile which is working fabulously by the way and now we have a full list of all the services running on the machine so Again, if you haven't, I've been using, if you haven't checked out Mythic C2, today's the day, check out Forge, it's amazing. Do check out my Malware profile implementation. I can guarantee you there are many bugs in this, and I would like to be able to handle at least enough of them so we can actually use these on ops. I'm going to be doing more rigorous testing on these profiles to make sure at least all the examples work and figure out any sort of kinks and quirks that makes them crash or not return data accordingly. And yeah, that's the video for today, guys. Go check out Mythic. Go check out Ballast Kit. If you want to get 5% off the entire Ballast Kit software stack, use Flank 25. And next year, hopefully as well, if I can renew that deal, it's going to be Flank 26. So I deeply appreciate all you guys coming to watch the video. Please smash the subscribe button, like, comment, all that good stuff. And yeah, see you on the next one.